and we're live. The origin story for today's broadcast title comes from, of all things, uh, a report in The Hollywood Reporter and um, it comes also from my having spent uh, last weekend with my Muay Thai teacher, um, Ajahn Surajai Surasut, uh, whose student I've been for 34 years. Hello everyone, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number 95. This is the one about valuing the old school. So as you're logging in, if you'd be kind enough to say where you're logging in from and uh, hit the like button and feel free to continue doing so uh, throughout the broadcast. It'll be a, a short one uh, today. So there's this idea that in Hollywood that everything is youth oriented. That is a line from the report that I uh, just mentioned, and it reveals that the recent release of the, the movie version of uh, Downton Abbey, the famous um, TV series from a while ago, so they put out a, a movie version and it hit the box office. It made it to the top of the box office and it raked in like $30 million in its opening weekend. Now, conventional wisdom in Hollywood um, does not lean in the direction of making movies for the older crowd because apparently because they believe that older people do not go to the movies anymore, right? And that I can tell you, being an older person, that's dead wrong. Um, what we just like to watch is the high quality stuff, right? So in a similar vein, it's become quite trendy in the political sphere to call for the elimination or the destruction or the removal of uh, names and artifacts and monuments and other elements related to prominent figures or prominent events in the history of the United States. So there's there are parties that call for the removal of, of all this stuff. And um, we kind of have to ensure that something similar doesn't happen in the Jeet Kune Do world when it comes to the old school, all right? While the technology has changed, the technology has not changed, right? So let me explain what I mean by that. In the early days, we used um, what, what we call slippers down in, uh, in, in the islands. I think Americans call them uh, flip-flops. Those things were used for a period of time as like the original focus mints. Um, the football arm shield and the football blocking shield, those were early versions of like kick shields and tie pads and, and what have you. That was stuff that Sifu Asano introduced um, to, to Bruce Lee uh, because of his experience in, in um, high school and college football. So now today we have several different companies making several different versions or designs of those uh, pieces of equipment, but we're still using them for what? We still use them for kicking, we still use them for kneeing, we still use them for elbowing, we still use them for punching, right? So we're still doing the same thing, developing our tools as designed, recommended, encouraged by Bruce Lee over 40 years ago. So even though the technology has changed, the technology has not changed. You see what I mean, right? So one, one value, I think, of the old school is the recognition that those innovations that I just mentioned, right? Kick shield and focus mitts and that kind of stuff. Those things were radical ideas for their time within the martial art world. Maybe boxers were using them, but martial art people didn't really spend a whole lot of time, at least in my experience, a whole lot of time um, in, with striking equipment. We spent a lot of time punching and kicking the air, right? So the innovations were born out of a desire to apply cutting edge technology to technique development. So today, cutting edge technology is still applied, right? The construction materials, for example, used in martial arts striking equipment is probably of a much greater, higher, uh, a much higher quality than before. And then, you know, stuff like um, breakthroughs in, in uh, cardiovascular conditioning, uh, ingredients that, that you put in supplements to enhance performance and stuff like that. All of that is improved technology. Um, so old school must keep abreast of new school, especially since that's pretty much what the Jeet Kune Do philosophy espouses, right? Bruce Lee said something like, to change with change 
is the change of the state. So that kind of means that as things evolve, you evolve right alongside with them. But new school cannot think that because evolution occurs, you know, during their era, so to speak, new school cannot think that they actually know what's what. Um, because here's, here's one reason why. The further removed that you are from the original source, the more diluted your information can become unless you do something to remedy such a situation, right? So both parties, both old school and new school, need to stay in touch with each other. Um, it, 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 would be, it would be a yin-yang relationship, which of course makes it then a Jeet Kune Do relationship. Right. So, for example, about about new school. So some in new school in the JKD kickboxing seem to de-emphasize the um, the impact and the import of lead weapon domination. Right. Kind of in favor of the traditional approach of um, rear hand, you know, the, the stronger hand carried in the rear position, which is, you know, kind of a standard boxing or kickboxing approach. So, like I said at the beginning, I spent last weekend with Ajarn Chai. And so, of course, in Muay Thai, we spend a lot of time hitting with the rear weapon because that's a lot of what the, the art itself is about. But as I was filming and doing to translate them into a lead weapon technique in the Jeet Kune Do classes that I will teach this week. So as soon as he was doing the drill, my brain was already trying to calculate how to turn it into more of a JKD oriented uh, drill for this week's classes. And that's what it takes. It takes constant vigilance, constant analysis, and constant adaptation, right? Wh whatever the source might be. Um, and I think uh, next week's broadcast, I'll talk more about that vigilance, analysis, and adaptation. So literally a few minutes ago, as I was finalizing and getting ready um, for the broadcast, my uh, JKD colleague, uh, Cameron Rico, who's been um, a dialogue partner on the JKD dialogue, so you guys can look that up. Uh, he posted something that said, don't do a technique five times and wait for the instructor to tell you what's next. Do the technique 500 times and wait for the instructor to tell you to stop. Right. So next week, I think I'll, I'll um, embellish on that a, a little bit more because there are two parties that can be at fault in this. What I, it, it's, it's an all uh, too oft seen product of the new school students who are technique hungry, so to speak. But we'll deal with that um, in next week's broadcast when we talk about vigilance and analysis and adaptation. Okay. All right. So that's it for today. Like I promised, a, a short uh, broadcast. Uh, feel free to share, like, and comment. Ask me questions if you want. I'll review everything after posting. Uh, sign up for notifications for when we go live here on Facebook. And also, please, please subscribe over on the YouTube to the channels for this, the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast, the Jeet Kune Do dialogues, and the FMA files. And when you subscribe, please hit the notification bell so that you'll know when the final edit video is uh, posted. Follow me on Twitter at uh, Dwight Woods and on Instagram at Dwight D. Woods. Um, quick heads up at ilovejikundo.com. Uh, quick Skills volume, uh, Series Volume 1 is available. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, coming up on Friday, September 27th. Uh, Jeet Kune Do Dialogues episode with uh, Emil Martirosian of Urban Combat uh, JKD in the UK. That's uh, this Friday. Should be at the regular time of 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, today is a pastel shirt. So I chose pastel blue. There we go. One of my favorite uh, photographs, uh, pictures of uh, C. Joe Bruce. And um, that's it, right? I'll see you back here next week for another issue of the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. Um, hopefully, I'll see some of you on Friday for the Jeet Kune Do dialogues. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, signing off. You take care now.